Hello and welcome to another episode of our MotoGP 19 career mode. Today we're here for the San Marino GP and the Aragon GP. And before we get into it, sorry if I sound a bit different and if I like breathe heavily or whatever, I've got a cold all of a sudden, literally, you know, this morning woke up with a cold, so, you know, something new. I'm never ill, am I? Absolutely never. But anyway, uh, to recap what happened in the last episode, we actually managed to get two wins in the last episode and propel ourselves right back into this championship fight. 12 foot lead ahead of uh, Aaron Cannett and 24 ahead of Lorenzo Dalla Porta. Yama Masia, he did fantastically in the, those two races really, so he's uh, get, getting his way back in there. Same with Antonelli, he was a little bit weaker uh, at Austria I think. But you know, he's only 53 points out, I think it's between us five realistically, I think I said that before, but probably more likely the top four, Nicola Antonelli is a little bit out of it. But, you never know. So uh, without further ado, let's head into, well, head at the end of practice and hopefully I'll have achieved all of my objectives. So at the end of practice, we did manage to put the bike second. Look how close we are to Lorenzo Dalla Porta as well. I made a little mistake on that lap. It was the uh, qualifying run lap. So I think we're definitely within the, you know, on good pace here because even with the um, the long runs, the race runs, I was in the top 10. You know, the lap times were like, you know, low, low 47s there. So I think we're looking pretty good for this one. So uh, yeah, it's hence qualifying and uh, yeah, try and get as high, as high up as we can. Hopefully we can get pole. So we are in the garage now and you might notice that the suit is looking a bit different. And that's because I'll, I've decided to put some mods on for this episode. Just some cosmetic mods, don't worry, it's not uh, affecting the AI or the bike or anything like that. Just a couple of cosmetic mods, uh, along with the fact as well... Um actually, I was... Oh yes, that's what I was going to say. I, I know I was going to say something else. We did actually uh, fail the second track climatization objective. And, uh, okay, the AI is doing this weird thing again. I did that uh, when I went out for my qualifying run in practice as well. Yeah, I uh, I just couldn't do, I couldn't stand the lines. I honestly, the lines were not great here. So it's track extension there, but hopefully we can try to do a good lap. So basically, what we've done is we've put Ricardo Rossi's suit on and got rid of his name. So it's a nice Alpine style suit that's actually you know accurate, rather than the ones like the generic ones that they made that don't look that great. And uh, you'll probably notice if you've been subscribed for a while, which I'm sure most of you have. Uh, Famous helmet return here, the uh, old green X light that I've used in all the other games. Uh, I decided to mod it into this one, so yeah. There you go, it's in the game now. With this suit. Hopefully, it'll be upturned in performance for us, although we were doing pretty well in the last episode, so hopefully, we can try and repeat that again. Uh, we're pretty good at both Misano and Aragon in uh, Rebel Rookies, so hopefully, we can do the same sort of thing. So Arbolino is in front of us here and hopefully he can give us a little bit of a toe as well around some of this track although there's not really many straights and we're not really catching him at a point where you can get a toe. If anything we're going to just catch him through a quick corner is we're going to hold us up but there we go. If we can get him down here that would be handy. Get a nice toe off him. Perhaps we'll just try and go flat through this corner and try and up the, up the inside of him. If I can actually talk properly. We are closing up quite a bit to him. But he's not holding us up yet, so that's fine. There we go, charged up the inside. We've gone a bit wide because we've got up his inside. Breaking for Caro. Or Caro. Gone a bit wide. Is he going to get back up the inside? No. So we are in front of him now. So luckily, Tony didn't really hold us up there. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was. That's, uh, I think that might have ruined the lap a little bit there. So we dropped out behind him. So yeah, I think we're going to have to go for another one because of that, so uh, yeah. Although 47.8, for saying the uh, kind of the misadventures we had there, wasn't taught, wasn't awful. Alright, towards the line we come now. It should be a much better lap, 45, 46, 47.2, so still not really fantastic there. But I'll head back into the pits and then see where we are in a couple of minutes if we have to go for some more laps. Right, so that's line. What's that time going to be here? 44, 45, 46-0. So that is good enough for ball position there. Uh, much better when we weren't being held up. Although we, we did lose a bit of time uh, behind Cornfall. But that is uh, pole position. So yeah, let's uh, end the session off and head into the race. So we're actually pretty convincingly on pole there uh, at the end because it seems like we're a bit quicker in the last sector, a bit quicker in the first sector, about the same in the third sector. It's the second sector where they are seem to gain a couple tenths on me, but starting from pole position, looks like we've got a pretty good chance at the victory here, especially since uh, Messiah is in uh, second place, so uh, that's helping me out a bit there. So yeah, let's, uh, without further ado, let's head into the race. 
Here we are live from the Moto3 class starting grid where riders and engineers are talking over the last few details before the race. So let's make sure that we've got the right tyres on. So Messia, we're going to have to watch out for him. Obviously at Silverstone he was very quick. I don't think he's going to probably uh, put a bit of pressure on us. And in fact we made a couple of mistakes like it through. We let Canet through at one point as well I think. Um, so yeah, we probably just want a bit of a less uh, mistake filled race there. So yeah, we'll just head into the race and hopefully we'll try and get those all important 25 points. All the riders have taken their places on the starting grid. Riders are deep in concentration with just a few seconds to go until this San Marino Grand Prix begins. So it's nice to see that classic helmet back on the bike. The new le leathers as well looking pretty good. So hopefully we can get off to a good start here in San Marino. Looks like we've not. That's a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh already. Eighth as well. Been a terrible start here. Oh, I think we've had contact with uh, Arbolino there. A little bit. Running through in sixth place now. Not really sure how we lost so many places off the start. The AI still seems to get like overpowered starts. Nothing you can do about it. Side of Vietti. There's a fifth, gets a century off Mino. Hopefully, we can attack Mino in a second. Through the last corner, we actually got a pretty good run on Mino here. We just such stream. Hopefully, we can attack him into turn 1 2. Right side through 1. Out of the brakes for 2. We got him. I think we actually have got him this time. So we actually for once get to overtake Mino rather than being the other way around. In the last corner again. I think I might have the fastest lap this time. 46, yeah, 46.8 for me, 47.1 for Messia. Alaport is a 46.5, damn. Well, this out of can it? Oh, can it, man. He didn't want to give us any room there, did he? It's gone very hot into Rio. He's put the back of Antonelli a bit, I think. Oh, he's had a can it, we go. First up on Antonelli in towards the last corner. Oh, we're going for the inside. We're past him. Over to second now. So Messia is the target. We've actually managed to climb our way through the pack, which is kind of surprising to me. 46 7. So not quite as quick as Dalaport went on the previous lap, but. Pretty quick. And there we go, Messia now. Oh, we properly sat Messia up, but that was a clean move on my half. He should have been able to see me come in there. He can't hit settle till too late, but we've now got a pretty big lead. Thanks to that. Right up the source line, start up an all my lap. We've got a bit of a lead still. Obviously, the AI have been scrapping behind, and obviously, we sat up for Messia quite badly there, which I didn't mean to do, it just kind of happened. But the tyres are feeling really worn here. I had to push very hard to uh, get those positions back, so I feel like the AI might be able to reel me in here. Right, so towards the line to start the final lap, we're still actually doing pretty well, the pace isn't too bad considering how bad the tyres feel. Into the last corner we come now, this front tyre is feeling horrendous, but out of the last corner we go, all towards the line, we are going to win once again, so that's three in a row now in Moto3, we are really on a stride. Part Ferme is starting to fill up with the stars of the race, so let's take a look at a graphic of the official results of the just finished Moto3 race. So in the end then, our pace was actually pretty good. It was a uh, We had the second fastest lap out of everyone. Dalla Porta getting second place, which is better than Canet, but still probably not that great. Mino got fourth in the end. Messia dropped down to fifth, obviously, after I sat him up. So I'm a bit sorry about that, but uh, not a lot you can do. On that last lap, I was so worried they were really catching me because um, the front tyre... That's the first time I've ever seen a hot front tyre. I don't know about any of you, but I've never had a hot front tyre except this race. The front tyre was so hot, I, I felt like I was losing the front everywhere. And they actually managed to hold each other up in the last sector, which just gave me that breathing room to where I thought they could probably overtake me. So if we have a look at the championship standings, it's actually put us back into a pretty comfortable position these last three races. We've now got a 21-point lead in front of Canet. Uh, it's starting to look, you know, pretty, pretty elusive. Really. 
we've got to really build out the gap just in case, because you never know what's going to come up ahead. We could have a race where we're 30th again, so we're going to make sure that we are covered for that. We need to have at least, like, you know, 40 points, really, to be safe. And, uh, uh, so, yeah, Canet still second, Dalaport third, Yama Messia fourth, and Nicola Antonelli in fifth. If we have a look at the team's championship now. Uh, best capital Dubai are five points behind Leopard Racing, but after my pretty good performances as of late, and Rodrigo starting to pull his weight a bit as well, we are only seven points down in third place, 658 squad course in fourth, and 30 points behind them is Stella Garner, Max Racing team in fifth place. So let's head into Park Ferme and then the Career Hub, and we'll end, we can see what will happen, uh, if anything's changed, and then we can head into the next race, which should be at Aragon. This rider has been able to impose a frantic pace on today's race, and now he and his mechanics are rightly going to party. Yes, we are going to party, because that was probably one of my favourite victories. We've got a bad start, and an extra car this way back through. Some hard overtakes as well, but some nice races with AI. That's the kind of race I'm looking for, you know. AI is similar pace to me, so we can all have a nice little battle. No one's, you know, no one's really got the upper hand. I think over the course of the lap, I was obviously a bit quick, because I managed to get my way through, but it was a good fun race. Uh, in the end we gained nearly 6,000 points, 5,909, so now we're at 66,362 points and we are full back in the contract status once again. Like I said, I did fail that one track affinity, you know, the high track affinity, couldn't do it. So now we got 70 uh, development points, so we'll look if that's enough to upgrade. It is not, we need another 20, so hopefully we can do it at the end of this episode then. So let's have a look at news from MotoGP World. He endures and wins, he's the best in the San Marino Grand Prix. Wonderful performances from Rossi second. It's clear he's enjoying himself and wowing the thousands of fans around the circuit. Victory for Marquez in Moto2. In Moto3, Biker raises the bar, teaches Dallaporta and Canet a trick or two. Worth for the stars in Moto3. Dallaporta. I made a lot of small mistakes over the course of the weekend. I have to be more meticulous if I want to beat Biker next time. So without further ado, let's head into Aragon and apologize once again apologies for sounding pretty ill. I know I sound extra ill here because I'm feeling a bit ill. So yeah, but oh yeah, I've been feeling ill the whole time, and I, I can I can hear that I sound a bit I sound worse in this particular clip. So apologies for that, but yeah, we will head into Aragon now, and I'll see you at the end of practice. So at the end of the session, then we managed to achieve actually not too many of our objectives, but we have got enough development points to upgrade the last upgrade. So it doesn't matter. So that is actually the last time this season we'll have to do free practice. Um, you know, more, more than just a couple of laps obviously, to get down into the circuit and in the past lap we can to get through to Q1 but it's the last time we'll have to do all of the different programs so uh, pretty interesting to think about there but 8th place at the end of that session only half a second off which it is ridiculous they find that entire amount of time in the last sector I was red through the first three and then you know half a second just down the long back straight I think and probably into the last corner of it as well I could take a bit of blame for that maybe but heading to qualifying I really hope we can try and start in a good position because we are massively quick in the first sector so we could get quite a few positions right so we're in the garage no messing about once we'll head straight oh actually yep we need to change tyres no there's something I was missing there so yep we'll head straight out we'll try and do the quickest that we can that was the quickest that we did. Uh, we didn't really get anywhere near that. The fastest we did before was a 204, but I was on the uh, hard medium. Obviously, the lap times come down as I get more, you know, climatized from the circuit. But we are always coming to the end of the season now. Obviously, after this, there's the uh, four flyaways and then Valencia. So, only five races to go after this one. So we definitely got to be uh, trying to extend the gap. I'd like to uh, wrap it up beforehand, hopefully, but uh, you never know. Probably won't happen. It'll probably come down for the last race for a guess, but uh, it should be good fun. Binder's in front of us here, which is not really what I wanted. Although, he stayed right out of the way, so thanks, Evan. They actually did a pretty good job of that. Sometimes I get a bit annoyed at AI getting in my way on qualifying laps, but that was pretty good. He got right off the racing line, just let me ride right around the outside of him, didn't hold me up, and now he slotted him behind me for a nice turf if he wants one. Which obviously I wouldn't really be that happy to give, but in terms of the strategy itself, he's done a good job, so fair play.
probably not the best line through turn 12 there. Well, well through 13. Really use the soft tyres in this sector. To 14. I've tried within, you know, I have to take a bit of a different line there to try and get a better exit. I found that that actually does give me like a couple of tenths of a second, so I thought why not? Try and care as most speed we can onto this straight. We've gone very wide into this corner. Bit of a mistake really. But oh well. Look towards the line. To a two, to a three, to a three six there. Uh. So we'll head into the pits and hopefully that's a decent lap. But if we have to go for another one, we can. Although I don't think there's going to be a massive amount of time we can take off that really. Four towards the line we come. What's that going to be? Two a one, two a two, two a two seven. That is second position on the grid. I am happy with that to be fair. Considering how much we were lacking, that was a fantastic first three sectors and a pretty good sector four as well. So we can really take the fight here this weekend with that position. So 100th off Yama Masia there in the end. Pretty surprising to be honest. I'm a bit shocked by that. Now I was really not expected to be that close in qualifying, especially after struggling a little bit there in practice. So we are second. Dallaport a third. Fourth for Antali. Fifth for Canet. Sixth for Binder. Seventh for Arbolino. Seven, eighth for Vietti. I think my controller might have disconnected actually. Hang on. Let me uh, just adjust the controller. Because I tried to scroll down the page and it doesn't seem like I could. There we go. So Kaito Toba in ninth and Andrea Mino in tenth. So let's head into the race. And let's try and make it four in a row. It was a long weekend for the Moto3 riders, but finally the showdown is here. We're coming to you from the starting grid. There's just a few minutes to go before the race begins. It's been pretty rapid in the tyre change there. But Jan Messier is on pole, and he's been getting some brilliant starts lately. Uh, Dar Porto also alongside us there on the front row, so we really want to try and get off the line well. Also, we did not get off the line well at all in San Marino, so we've got to try and do the opposite to that. So, without further ado, no more rambling, let's get straight to the race. The final riders have taken their place on the starting grid and everything is ready to start the race. Just a few seconds to go and the lights at the Aragon track will signal the start of the race. So yes, we're in the middle of the front row. We've got to try and get off to a better start than we did in San Marino. We've got to try and beat Messia and Dallaport to turn one. Lights out, away we go. We've not had a fantastic start actually. We've been, we've been hit by Binder. Dallaport's gone straight to the right side of the trap, but it's not helped him out. Can it's on the inside as well? The AI broke nice and early for turn one. So we're back up into third place now. Dallaport is running around the outside off Messia. I think he's going to get him. Oh, he's squeezing him out a little bit. We're coming up to. Oh, no, Messia's trying to ride around the outside. We're coming up to the, towards the section where I was a bit quicker than the AI. Around the outside of Dallaport. Kind of squeezed him out there. That was not great. Messia leads. Messia does lead. Once again, but he's not had the best exit off that corner. We're going to have an attack into turn seven here. That's how early he breaks. Uh, we'll have a look at the inside. Oh, it was a bit dodgy. We couldn't quite do it on the exit. Can we get past him? Side by side, down towards the corkscrew section. Up the inside we go through turn eight. He leaves us a bit of room on the inside. Once again, Messia always being a nice player. Down the hill towards 14. I think I've gone in a bit hot for 14 there. It's going to be harder to flip them. Oh, Messia was actually on my right hand side. I thought he'd be on the left. That's not giving me a good exit though from this uh, tight left. I'm assuming that L will come flying on the inside or flying past me on the straight here. I can hear that KTM. Yep, Messia's come through. Try and sneak some such stream off him. We're in a pretty tight line there as Messia through the last turn. We have actually got a pretty good run on him. Naturality, but here comes Antonelli as well. So it could be three wide in the second. We'll see it as a 2077. I do a 2078. We're going to add towards turn one. And up the inside and have to go in a bit. Oh, we've sat him up again. That's two races in a row. We've sat up poor old Yama Masia. But we were completely up the inside. He definitely needs to. Uh, sort of think about just trying to ride around the outside of riders instead of just sitting the bike up. I mean, it was really a necessary sit-up. It was a bit of an aggressive move, I'll, I'll, sure, but, you know, I was up the inside. I was, was fully alongside him, and he's just decided to uh, sit the bike up, so I'm not really sure why he's done that. Uh, towards the end of the straight, we are still leading, actually. It's just surprising. I thought it would come past by now. Here comes Darren Binder. Darren Binder in second position. Darren Binder in first position. Now, 
through the last corner here at Aragon. They've got a better run than him though. To the left outside of Darren. Or towards the line. Put it alongside in two or three, four for Darren there. Passes up on the race, but we've got my pass and we haven't even actually had to dive up the inside of him through the first corner. He's not quite had the exit the others had uh, on the previous lap. But fair play to Darren Binder. He's definitely given it a bit of a go. Right start the last corner. We actually kept the lead that time. They scrapped quite a lot, so they couldn't really uh, compete with the lap times. But two or three seven there. Not too bad for race pace, especially on the mediums as well. So actually, that's a very good lap. So we're definitely uh, pushing the boat out a bit here. Got a bit wide here. That's allowed Antonelli to come through. Have to get straight back on his case. Really, we can't let him get. That was a pretty big mistake to make because I went pretty wide, 2048, so we're about a se we're over a second further than we are on the previous lap. The riding was not quite as good, and obviously that mistake contributed as well. And the tyre wear, all things giving us one second slower on that lap. Antonelli, is he going to try and get away though? As we round the final corner, unfortunately, Antonelli absolutely annihilated us on that lap. We ran really wide though, that was going to be a good line. I went conservative. I think we're going to keep it luckily because they are quite far behind. But towards the line, yeah, it's going to be still second place. But I went conservative, so I broke earlier and clipped the curve and ran wide anyway. So I had two two reasons to go slow in that corner. Of finishing the final lap. Let's take advantage of these moments to take a look at the Moco 3 final ranking. So I'm telling you, a 2.019 on that last lap. So it uh, seems like a legitimate lap to me. Not way faster than anyone else at all. It's a little bit broken there, I think, on that last lap. That's why he got 2.6 seconds in front of me in the end. But, you know, whatever. He's not a championship contender, so I'm not too bothered. So Antonelli won ahead of me in second, third for Lorenzo Dallaport, fourth for Andrea Mina, fifth for Yama Masia, sixth for Canet. So Canet really struggling in that one, seventh for Ramirez, eighth for Toba, ninth for Abelino, and tenth for Suzuki. That's really shaped up the championship now. We've got a 31 point lead ahead of Canet in second place, 33 ahead of Dallaporta in third, Yama Masia, 59 behind in fourth place, fifth for Nicola Antonelli, 63 behind. And you've got to be really starting to look at the fact that now it's going to definitely be a three way fight with any obviously five rounds to go. Obviously you could gain 59 or 63 points in five rounds. But I think it is actually mathematically impossible for Mino to win the championship now. So it is definitely between us top five mathematically, but realistically I think it's just a top three here. So if we have a look at the constructors or the team championship, Leopard Racing continue to lead by six points ahead of Best Capital Divide in second place. Third place still for us, Commonlang at Crescini Motor 3. Obviously we uh, lost a few points there uh, apparently in that one, but I beat all those riders, so it was uh, Rodriguez Holt. Fourth for 658 Squadron Course, and fifth still for Selgana and Max Racing Team. So let's head into Parfum once again, and then the career hub to do that last upgrade of the bike and end off the episode. Even though he didn't manage to win the race today, he still put on a great show. The applause from the team and the fans is definitely deserved. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. Obviously, unfortunately, it was unfortunate to lose the race in the way that we did, but we did, and that's just racing. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes someone will come along. You'll make a little mistake. They have better to pace, so they'll get away. We want to get another fruitful weekend in terms of gaining the points. We gained 5,703 there. So now we're up to a total of 72,065 points. Uh, we didn't do that great on the objectives, like I said. Uh, well, I can't even remember if I did say it, but I, I meant to say it. We uh, couldn't do the five laps for the you know, the race simulation and we couldn't do the high affinity, but we gained enough points anyway to get 90, which is enough to upgrade the bike. So let's go upgrade that bike. So now we've got the maximum bike we'll ever have in Moto3. It's the best bike you can get. Max upgrade, so it should be on par with what the AI have, but probably not, let's be honest. So we've got news of the MotoGP world. Q&A, as Aragon Rins answers the criticisms of the last few days of the great victory. Rossi executes an excellent race, but still only manages second. In Moto2, another great victory for Luti, he takes an excellent victory. Another great race for Luti, he takes another excellent victory. In Moto3, Antonelli climbs the podium with Biker and Dalla Porta. A word from our stars in Moto3. Our correspondent talks to Antonelli, who has a few words to say about Biker. Biker is a rider who is still to grow, but he's got what it takes to be a potential champion. Considering I'm winning the championship, yeah, I would have thought that too. But I hope you have enjoyed that one, guys. It was another good couple of races there. We seem to sort of be out of our little dark period, although you never know, you could turn up to a race and the AI could be absolutely overpowered again. So you got to watch out for that. That's why I'm trying to build up this lead, to be honest, so that the, if that does happen, we're protected. Because at the minute, we're still protected. We've got a 31 point lead. Uh, so actually, we can afford to come last again. But I don't really want to do that because that makes the championship a bit closer than I would like. 
But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I shall see you in the next video.